On the outside, they're almost identical, but on the inside, they couldn't be more different. Both are first attempts, though. The Nexus 7 is Google's first attempt at a Nexus tablet, and the Asus PhonePad is the company's first attempt at a tablet with an earpiece. I'm Anton Dinoy, this is Pocket Now, and you're watching the Asus PhonePad versus Google Nexus 7 video. Let's check it out. The Nexus 7 is soon going to turn one year old, and the follow-up is just around the corner. Or it should be, judging by the usual Google release cycle and common sense. However, the ASUS Mate Google Tablet is still a great solution for those looking for a solid build, decent performance, and an excellent price. The phone pad is made by the same company, ASUS. It was introduced at this year's MWC and has two main selling points. The Lexington platform powering it through an Intel Atom Z2420 processor, and the earpiece on top, which is a great addition for those who don't want to carry a phone and a tablet, as well as for those that don't want to talk on their tablets using the speakerphone or Bluetooth accessory options. Now let's compare these two, otherwise almost twins. We'll take a look at hardware, performance, and user experience. Talking about hardware, the Nexus 7 has an 800x1280 resolution on a 7-inch form factor, resulting in a pixel density rating of 216 ppi. Underneath the hood, there's a quad-core NVIDIA Tegra 3 CPU running at 1.2 GHz, 1 GB of RAM, 16 or 32 GB of internal storage, 1.2 megapixel webcam, plus all the usual suspects you would expect. The phone pad has so much in common with the Nexus 7, beyond its appearance. We have the same 7-inch screen with 800x1280 resolution and 216 ppi, 1 GB of RAM, this time 8 and 16 GB of internal storage options, 1.2 megapixel webcam, no rear shooter even though select markets get a 3.1 megapixel piece, and the same usual suspects. The difference is that the phone pad is powered by an Intel Atom Z2420 processor which, while still clocked at 1.2 GHz, has only a single core. However, the phone pad has a physical earpiece up top so that you can take or make calls just like you would with a regular smartphone. Yes, a 7-inch one. While the Nexus 7 also has cellular versions, sharing its radio almost entirely with the phone pad, it lacks the earpiece. The Google tablet might have higher capacity storage options, but it lacks the ability for an expansion via microSD, something which the phone pad offers underneath the rear top detachable cover. The battery on the Nexus 7 also happens to be larger than the one on the phone pad, 4325 milliamp hours versus 4270 milliamp hours. Build quality on both devices is solid. Still, the phone pad has an aluminum back versus the plastic cover on the Nexus 7, which makes us believe it is kind of indestructible. You can toss it and throw it to your heart's content, while the phone pad's aluminum back will probably make you think twice before even throwing it on countertops. In terms of size, we can definitely say that these two are identical, give or take a couple of millimeters where the phone pad is taller. Thickness as well as weight is exactly the same at 10.45 millimeters and 340 grams. Let's check out performance. First things first though. It takes the Nexus 7 42 seconds to boot up. The phone pad beats that by 5 seconds for a 37 second boot up time. For everything else, keep this in mind. We're comparing quad core versus single core here. Given that Intel heavily calls out the Android optimization on its Atom processor. In day-to-day -day usage, you'll find the Nexus 7 to be faster in some cases, while the pad phone will finish tasks quicker in others. Still, if milliseconds matter to you, yes, the Nexus 7 is oftentimes a hair faster when launching applications like Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Foursquare, Email, Calendar, Spotify, or Chrome. Where the Nexus 7 outshines the phone pad is web browsing. Using Chrome on both, the phone pad lags behind in page load times with anywhere between 1 and 3 seconds. Scrolling is smoother and text rendering is also faster on the Nexus 7. However, if you don't use Chrome on the phone pad, but its alternative browser, the face-off, is pretty, pretty level, with some pages loading faster on the phone pad and others on the Nexus 7. Taking a look at screens, these two tablets use the same display technology and specifications on paper, but Real-life usage concludes that this round goes to the Nexus 7, which is, in itself, pretty bad, because the Nexus 7 has a poor display. 
Beyond the low resolution on both tablets, you will see less contrast and shallow blacks on the phone pad than on the Nexus 7. The Google tablet also generates cooler display temperatures than the phone pad. However, ASUS has bundled a neat utility called ASUS Splendid, where you can tweak color temperature, hue, saturation, and turn vivid mode on and off, basically allowing you to have the best experience tailored to your eyes and liking. Brightness-wise, they're equal and outdoor visibility is exactly the same. Moderate. In terms of software and user experience, the Nexus 7 will appeal to those who like a stock vanilla Android experience. There's also something else tipping the scales in the Nexus 7's favor. It runs the latest Android version, namely 4.2.2. The phone pad is powered by Android 4.1.2 and ASUS has made some customizations to it. Some lighter, some heavier, like the notification tray, custom keyboard, both of which can be disabled for a more stock experience. ASUS has also added additional widgets to the phone pad, some of which are useful, some of which you'll probably never use. More on those in our upcoming full review of the ASUS phone pad. Overall, if you need a tablet, which is easy to carry around, but you'll only need it for basic tablet operation, the Nexus 7 is still a great choice. However, if you want to leave your phone at home and you don't mind taking goals on your 7-incher, holding it up to your ear, the phone pad is a solid option. But you might also want to take a look at A. What the competition has to offer and B. How deep your pockets are. And we're not talking about whether they can accommodate a 7-inch phone or not. That's gonna do it for today. Make sure to follow Pocket Now and our YouTube channel for more coverage of the ASUS phone pad, including the upcoming full review. Follow Pocket Now on all the usual social media channels, and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I've been Anton Dinaj. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And that's it for now. Till next time.